Hello, greetings once again. I'm back with you. I've got the uh, Bayfeng radio today. Uh, some of you have expressed a little bit of interest in this UV25. So I just thought I'd take another look at it. It's a nice radio. It's got an excellent uh, audio sound coming out of the speaker. I'll just put the... Uh... Saturday the 7th and Sunday the 8th of December. So yeah, it's got the audio from the radio yeah, station. Not this weekend. Not the weekend after, but the weekend after that. Oh, and we have saved some tickets for you to be there. At so yeah, that's the broadcast station. I'll turn that off. And uh, it receives that pretty nicely. Uh, just press a little button on the side. That's one of its many features. But today I'm going to use it on on uh, the space station international space station it's got torch feature it's got one or two fancy little gadgets you can just see i've switched the torch off there uh, this antenna is not too bad it's a bit of a a base but it does receive reasonably well on vhf uh, uhf's even better i've found uh, today i'm going to use it on 437 810 megahertz that's the uh, start of the downlink pass for the international space station which is orbiting uh, above the earth it generally comes into range a few times, probably get two or three passes tonight. So this is going to be the first pass I get the chance to listen to. I usually work it with my satellite array and a large antenna system. But you can actually receive the space station with a simple rubber duck antenna or, or this particular one, as we'll find out in a minute. So you want to uh, start off by programming your uh, radio. Like I said, it's a UV25 Pro in this case. And if you look at this, uh, you can see on the screen... I've put some uh, memory frequencies in there, so we've got the start of the pass, hopefully you can see that, and I can flick down uh, 5 kilohertz steps, and I've programmed in basically uh, 437810 right down to 437790, so it's 790, 795, 800, 805 and 810, that's 437 megahertz, so I've pre-programmed them into the memory slot, which makes all the channel changing simple. The reason why I've done that is because as the space station approaches, the frequency receive changes, and we call it the Doppler shift correction. So we just adjust the frequencies to match the down signal, so we get a clearer sounding reception. So that's what we've done on that. On the bottom, just for a bit of fun, I've inputted the uplink frequency, uh, 14599 AFM, but I'm not gonna be trying to transmit because this antenna Although it's a powerful 10 watt radio, this uh, particular antenna won't do the, the trick to try and get another space station. There's too many people with bigger antennas which will bombard and, and overwhelm my little signal. So I have tried it on one of my satellite arrow antennas. Uh, it, it was okay, a little bit too powerful uh, on the full output because it kind of caused a little bit of interference on the receive frequency because I use two radios. If you want to look at that, check out one of the other videos where you'll find this one with the arrow antenna. But right now, like I said at the start, we're just going to receive the ISS. So let's give it a go. Oscar 93, Hotel Golf. So you V25. So some nice reception, UV25, Bayfang. So yeah, good reception. Needs the squelch backing down.
So I hope you enjoyed that one. That worked out pretty well. Nice uh, sound through this speaker. I got this one from AliExpress. Not particularly expensive. Not a bad piece of kit. Certainly like the look of it and the feel of it. It's a little bit big for going out for a walk with a dog. But certainly if you're going out on some kind of endurance expedition, get it in the rucksack and uh, yeah, it's quite heavy and sturdy. You'll like it. 73, thanks for watching.